This is Doombox, and I'm playing Guild Wars 1, and I am currently in Beacon's Perch after a very, very tricky mission in the Frostgate. Uh, that was a bit of a, a predicament, but it's finally over, and we can continue. We are one mission away from Lion's Arch, which is going to give us access to all kinds of great things, including a Winter's Day cosmetic headpiece, which is only available for today, and that's it. So I need to get there today, otherwise I have to wait an entire year to get this Christmas helmet. Shouldn't be that bad, but then again, I said that last time and it took me four hours to beat the Frostgate. So... Anyways, let's load up on henchmen. They are currently level 10, so they've been like slightly upgraded from last time. I have learned that Claude, the cultist henchman, is hot garbage. So we're going to bring Little Thom the brawler because he hasn't failed us yet. Well, that's not entirely true. He kind of did last time, but it was mostly me for being stupid. He's actually kind of an okay henchman, mainly because he has... Cyclone Axe, which is good AoE. Anyways, we are on the quest Krita to refugees. I mean, to Krita refugees. And there's just a couple of, you know, Krita quests. And then we make it into Krita and we have to do Gates of Krita. Yeah. Like, it isn't entirely clear where they want me to go. Well, I know we're supposed to go this way because Krita is that way. But nothing in the game is telling me I need to go this way. So I hope I'm not, like, skipping a step or something. All right, on to the next zone. Griffin's... Butt crack? Master Seeker Nathaniel. Here you go. This is probably what we want to do. To Krita, the ice cave. I'm going to assume this is the quest we want. Follow Aiden's markers through the ice cave. I think I can handle that. We got some white mantle knights with us. That is the uh, first of many that we're going to encounter very soon here. All right, so we are in the snow and... This is one of those really cool zones. There's only a few of them in the game where you go from one region to the next and you actually see the transition of like terrain and stuff. So just make a note of this moment. Like, you know, we're in the snowy cave with the snowy trees and we're just running through. And uh, yeah, what up Aiden? How's it going? We're in the snow still? Oh, and we got a free level. All right, we have the next two Krita quest, the third one. And so here's the snowy area, and then boom, we're in sand now. How did that happen? Whoa, suddenly we're on a beach, and it feels very, like, you know, jungly. We got some grass here all of a sudden. That was a very interesting transition. But hey, you know what? Who cares? Because this area is sick. We have made it to Krita, guys. This is huge. This is, the, this is the very region that we want to be in for Lion's Arch. And, you know, these zones just get better and better. We started off in Old Ascalon, this crappy, dumpy area. We went to the nice, cool, peaceful mountains, even though some of it was very, very tricky. And now we are in the nice, beachy, tropical area. I love, like, tropical beach vibes. It feels like I'm on a nice little vacation here. And it's, it's great, you know? I love the beach, I love Krita, I want to be here. It's a place of opportunity, and I was supposed to give this guy something. Hey, remember this guy from the very beginning of the game? Here he is once again. So Krita is kind of overrun with these undead zombie guys. Here's a quick little lore update for you people. So the Kingdom of Ore, right here, for those of you who've played Guild Wars 2, this is a very prominent area was sunken into the ground by something called the Cataclysm. Uh, in the same way, you know, the Searing destroyed Ascalon, the Kingdom of Ore also got destroyed, so the undead are kind of, they've made their way up the shore and are kind of terrorizing Krita. Uh, so, that's fun. Unfortunately, unlike in Guild Wars 2, they don't say death good, but they're still creepy nevertheless. All right, Gates of Krita. The first Crichton mission, the last we need to do to get to Lion's Arch. Let's try that again. Whoa! 
Now, some good news about this mission is it's very much just like a run forward and kill stuff type mission. However, the bonus is, take a guess, a grab an item and pick it up and be unable to fight mission again. First step in doing the bonus is we need to get this pig oink to follow us. So back in the Shiver Peaks, the mobs were very much like hard hitting, you know, melee type mobs. The enemies here in Kryda are very condition heavy and very hex heavy, but their attacks don't deal a ton of damage. So it's dangerous, but like for a different reason. Uh, but I don't, I don't particularly remember this area being like very, very difficult. Okay, so it turns out that skeletons can't bleed. Who would have guessed that? So I'm kind of gimped this round. I really should have gone ax instead of sword. So, okay, wait a minute. The, the skeleton guys don't bleed, but the zombie guys do. So they are like very, very specific and actually kind of realistic about what can bleed. So anything with skeleton in the name can't bleed as you would expect, but zombies can because they they still have flesh if you if you think about it. Bonus, retrieve the Orion text and have it translated. Time for another fetch quest. I vividly remember that we have to go into the river. Uh, I hope those guys aren't important up there because they, they're gonna die, <laughs> but uh, this is the way we wanna go. And I'm pretty sure we have to fight level 17s once we grab the book, so. Prepare your bungholes, everybody. All right, Orient text. Hello, Mr. Slow Running, how I've missed you. Hello, level 17s. Oh my gosh. Ouch. Those guys hurt. Holy frick, dude. Oh my gosh. That chain lightning, bro, that's a lot. All right, well, I sincerely hope that that was all we had to fight. There's a good chance we have to fight a whole bunch more on the way back. If that's the case, then oh boy. <laughs> I'll probably res my pet. I am gonna pray that no more smoke phantoms pop up because oh my gosh. Mm, mm, let's just run. How about that? How about we just run? Hmm, probably a bad idea now that I think about it. But honestly, I just want to complete the bonus. And if I wipe, then who cares? I'll just do the mission again and have the bonus done. So, you know, screw it, whatever. <laughs> all my henchmen are dead. So like, it's all up to me to not die. And I don't think I'm gonna encounter any enemies because I killed everything. All right, bonus complete. And like, I'm just not even gonna bother with trying to res those guys. I'm just gonna like hard start over again. Totally fine. Because the beauty of prophecies is the bonus is done, regardless of whether or not you finish the mission. So best strategy, not even mad about that. Just gonna do the mission again, fine by me. Actually, you know what? I missed a very good opportunity to do something, which is gonna be switching to ax for this mission. Because why? We learned there's a whole lot of undead guys here and undead do not take kindly to bleeding. So, uh, hello, Executioner's Axe. Hello, Cyclone Axe. For the first time in a while, I'm changing builds. I love Cyclone Axe. Just having that AoE Axe skill is so good. I also, like, love the sound the Axe makes. It's very, like, weighty and impactful when you swing with it. Heal me, heal me, heal me. Mmm. Help me fight these undead, and I'll give you and your people passage into Lion's Arch. That's why I'm here. I'm gonna sort of let them be the cannon fodder. We just don't want Hablian to die, but he's level 18. He's pretty strong. Don't think we have to worry about that. This is actually kind of fun. We got like a huge group of dudes who are just swarming up, killing undead. I'm into this. I like this. Necrid Horsemen. So there's kind of a thing, like a running joke, that there are no horses in Guild Wars, even to the point where in Guild Wars 2, for like the Zodiac stuff, they like put the word horse in quotes and it's like a guy in a costume. So Necrid Horsemen, this is the only evidence of a horse existing in all of Guild Wars, one and two. So make a note of that. Very interesting. Hablion, where you going, bro? Last I checked, this is not where the end of the mission is. Oh, he wants to fight the Lightning Drake down there. That's, mm, yeah, we're supposed to go up here, but 
Mm, Hablion wants to fight a lightning drake. We can't leave him because if he dies, we fail the mission. Unless he just like stays here. So I just like go up without him. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> well, he can't die here if, if there's nothing that can kill him. Like it's not gonna pop up there and start fighting. Meanwhile, all of his men just like pieced out somewhere. I don't know where they went. And of course, standing in this water poisons us. So if we could like not stand in it, that would be preferable. Oh, 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 that's not good. Okay, it was just that one guy evidently. And Hablion just ported to us, so that's good. What a sight for sore eyes. We can't let them get the scepter. <laughs> so stand around and talk about it. That seems like some sort of important bad guy. Also, I don't think I've ever seen that cutscene in the history of Guild Wars. All right, guys, we did it. We made it to Lion's Arch. It is still Winter's Day, as you can see by the snow and Christmas stuff in the middle of the jungle. Uh, yeah, so I have huge, huge, really awesome plans for the next video. I'm going to do some slight travel to some different continents, but I'm still going to continue on in Prophecies in the correct story order, so don't worry, I'm not going to deviate too much, but it's going to be fun, it's going to be a nice little break from the, the norm, you know, but before we do that, let me get what I came for and get the stupid little hat that I want. Crunch, let's see what you got. Frozen accessory token, that's what we use to get our hat. Hmm, oh, this quest is gonna be hard. We need to collect a hundred candy cane shards. Oh, oh, would you look at that? I happen to have 248 right there. Well, that was convenient. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> account ruined. All right, so there are two vendors that offer two different uh, sets of hats, the Grenth versions and the Duena versions. The Grenth ones are a little more like evil and the Duena ones are more like comfy, I guess. So I've thought long and hard about the hats I want to get. I can only get two of them. And I am liking this festive winter hood because it's, you know, it's got some fur on it and it really fits the aesthetic of what I've got going here with the Asclonian Charhide armor. So I'm going to grab this and let's see how it looks. That actually looks really good. Holy crap. That looks great with what I'm wearing. I just need it to be dyed. All right, that looks great, guys. I'm really happy with this look. Uh, it goes very well with the char hide armor. It almost looks like it's part of the set, except for the part where the dye doesn't quite match, but we're just going to ignore that for now. Yeah, I love it. It doesn't even look like I'm wearing a festival hat. It's just like a cool-looking hood thing. Like I'm like a Jedi or something. I don't know. I love it. So let's grab our next hat. It cannot be worn as a hat. Thanks for the clarification. Uh... Okay, so most of the Winner's Day items are notoriously kind of bad because they just remove your hair entirely. Like, this is fine because it's a hood, but for the hats, you just look bald as like a female character. So I'm going to go for the Divine Halo, which is, it's a very cool looking item with particle effects on it. It's, I mean, it, it honestly looks like something out of Guild Wars 2, <laughs> to be frank. But it's cool, you know, I, I might find a use for this later, but for now I'm going to rock the, the hood look because that's just sweet, dude. I love this. I look awesome. This was a, a heck of a ride. I honestly thought that the Gates of Krita and Frostgate were going to be like one video that was going to be five minutes or something, but it was quite an adventure. I wiped a whole bunch of times on Frostgate just to get here. I sort of intentionally wiped once on Gates of Krita, but we made it. Like I said, I have big plans for the next video, but don't worry, I'm not gonna deviate too far. The overall goal is to still go in order and do prophecies first, but I'm gonna do a little bit of a little bit of a vacation and do a couple of cool things. And in the next video, I'm also gonna clarify exactly what is going on with this account, because it's sort of been ambiguous at this point. Like it's not an Iron Man, but so far it's been a vanilla playthrough where I haven't really cheated. So I'm gonna really narrow down the restrictions I am personally gonna give on this account, uh, because people have been asking and people have been saying, hey, you should do this, you shouldn't do this. So I'm gonna set that in stone for the next one. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Doom underscore Box or on Twitch at Doombox TV. And if you want to join my guild slash Discord, check the description for info about that. And also, I have made a playlist 
that features all of the videos in this Guild Wars playthrough in order. So if you want to binge through that or catch up on anything you've missed, check that out. This was fun. I'm really happy with this hood and I can't wait for the next video. Anyways, see you guys next time. This is Doombox signing 